What's up guys, Guillaume Zerin, welcome back to the first ever video on my channel on Pro Soccer Manager 2021. Today's video will be the first impressions of this game. Um, have to be mentioned though before anything, the game is definitely not on its final build. There is a lot of issues still with this game. The devs have been working hard over the past week to try and fix a lot of the bugs, but yeah, there still are quite a few. So I'd wait until the game is fully released if you wanted to um, well, invest in that game. I'm going to be very honest with you uh, because you guys have allowed me to be in this position where I can test this game and basically tell you what I think about it. So I figured I'd be very upfront at the very start of the video. Now, there are some very decent features about this game. I think once the game is fully, fully fixed, uh, if that ever is a thing, I think there is a potential to have a lot of fun on this game. Um, the video is going to be very simple. We'll first take a look at career mode. We're going to take a very brief look at pro cyclist, although, I mean, we don't really need to do so as there has been basically any changes. Uh, I'm going to take you through some of the new things in a uh, single player. And I guess I'll give an overall opinion over the game. Um, there will be more videos coming through uh, today and tomorrow on this game. We'll have a mountain gameplay. We're going to have a sprint gameplay. We're going to have an echelons gameplay. Um, there is, yeah. We're, we've got things prepared on this game. Um, no career mode for Pro Cyclist yet. As I said, the game is definitely not finished. And I wouldn't want to start a save uh, on the build of the game that isn't um, suitable for upload. Or at least suitable for the continuity of the game. But I've rambled enough. I only have 20 minutes to speak on this video. So we're going to move on to single player. All right. Welcome to career mode. Now, the home screen hasn't really changed. If we're being honest, we've had a revamp last year of that screen and PCM decided to uh, stay true to this screen. Um, the main dashboard didn't change either, right? The sponsors, as you can see, I've literally started this career just to like see what happens. Sponsors, same finances, same national team. Slightly different because we have a new feature. We've got the European Championships now in this game. And I mean, that's going to be fun, right? We've been asking for the, for the ECs for probably four years now. And PCM finally has them added. So that is absolutely stupendous. Um, the World tab, we've got one changes in the Teams aspect. We now have this page instead of having to click manually on each mini Mayo. Um, interestingly enough, there is one entire glitch uh, that I'm going to show you right now. And that is that if you load with Movie Star, you only have Movie Star as literally the only team in the game. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but that's the thing. So yeah, I'll wait until like, the game is a bit fixed for, uh, for that to, to launch, uh, say, with, uh, with Bala Valverde. Now, the main new feature of this game in career mode, at least, is this new and revamped objective screen. Um, it comes directly from the PCM CE, Prayers Pro, from David Put, that um, potentially some of you have used in the past couple of seasons. Um, but you can now micromanage directly your, um, your rider's objectives. And I do think it's, it's an interesting add. Uh, definitely adds some realism and a lot more freedom for those who like to micromanage. For example, those who do the, the entire training se seasons on FM, I think um, you will probably enjoy that um, that aspect of the game a bit more uh, tactical, a bit more strategical. Strategical? Strategic. There we go. Um, however, as we mentioned that right now, it is kind of bugged. Um, if you let the AI do it, you'll have like 100 races by June, which I do not recommend, if I'm being honest. Um, now, Another thing they've added through this stage and through this, sorry, through this um, new menu is that some stages have a lot more of an impact physically, a, a bigger th um, physical toll than some other stages. For example, Parue is going to take a lot more energy out of your radar than, for example, the second stage of the Giro d'Italia. So you can have, comes the end of the season, a radar with like 80 race days, right? But without too much fatigue, because he's only ridden races like the Tour of Kingai, like the Guangzhou Tour. Uh, I don't know why I'm focusing on China right now, but all of the stages that aren't exactly like demanding, and he'll have a decent energy level compared to a rider that'll have like 60, day, 60 days with one Grand Tour or two Grand Tours and classics. He will have a bigger impact, um, or a, a, like a less um, or a more impacted. There we go, um, a physical aspect. So that's another new change. Um, they've really tried to like modify that uh, that objective screen and make this um this whole planning a bit more realistic, a bit more immersive, which I do agree and I do like. Uh, another thing they've added 
is that the weather now has a real impact on both races and the weather, sorry, the weather has an impact on the weather. Nice one, you dickhead. But um, the weather has an impact on uh, the, um, the uh, conditions of how the race develops. So um, it can make a, a race much more challenging if there is rain. And also it impacts the morale um, of some of the riders. Not sure to what, is, to what extent. I haven't been able to see it yet. But um, yeah, it definitely adds, um, adds something to the race. One of the main uh, screen that has been added to uh, this game in um, 2021 is this one. It is in the page of your riders. I believe you can see it with every single team. Let me just uh, make sure you can. So this is season, and you're going to be able to see every single rider. Uh, sorry, every single rider's calendar from the moment he started till your point and his upcoming races. And you can see how many how many days he raced, how many victories he's got and where he finished on the GCs and um, respectable um, classifications. So it's a small add, right? I mean, it doesn't add anything to the game itself, right? It's not a new feature, but it is those small ads, those small details here and there that make the game a bit more immersive. And I really, really dig it, if I'm being honest. I think that's a very cool ad. Moving on to the pro cyclist uh, element, not much has changed. I mean, you can see on the new menu, you've got the European Championships and the ITT in the um the achievements which is fun um you've uh, got this is a new thing right this is the new training you now have dumbbells because your rider is definitely going to do them bicep curls yeah just just to improve his mountain stats right just bicep curling right with both hands because you want to get that stability you don't want to have like one arm two wham compared to the other one um i mean what do i talk about wham arms i literally have no muscles but yeah that's like the, the main thing that changed Early on in this, um, in the release of the game, this was completely fucked and you had no training. So it's nice to see that we now have some training. Um, something else that um, slightly changed, at least I think it is, uh, is that for your rider in the first year, you can't go from Continental to Continental Pro. Um, Nacon and Cyanide have had um, a real, um, or have made an effort to lengthen the game and your pro cyclist, and therefore you can't end up in World Tour in two years. And you can't be like a Tour de France winner, Giro winner, and Vuelta winner by the end of 22. And you can't have 84 mountain, hill, time trial, and sprint uh, when you're 24. So I do have to, uh, to upload that on them. Uh, sorry, to upload them on that. Because they've tried to um, make the game a bit, more, a bit more immersive, a bit more um, well, lengthy, I guess. And you, you, have to, you have to like felicitate them, congratulate them. Now, one of the main features they've added this year is the echelons now for those who've played tdf you're probably familiar with that kind of uh, marking on the stage profile for those who haven't this shows a uh, zone exposed to the wind now uh why is demar wearing the yellow jersey <laughs> why i'm telling you this game is fucked Right, this, this game is not finished. Uh, I believe he's probably wearing a yellow jersey because it's my second time recording this stage. I recorded it before. I mean, no, I played it, but I forgot to record. I had won the stage. Uh, please believe me, I'm not lying. But no, like this is the the new features. So they've got echelons. They are extremely OP, massively OP. I did one attempt with Ineos on uh, a Tour de France stage, and uh, no difficulty. Right, it's just a flat stage with some wind. I believe the main peloton, um, well, if we could call our main peloton, finished about 12 minutes behind. And yeah, that was like P P11 was 12 minutes behind. It was an absolute madness. Ghana had destroyed everyone. And if you've got like a leader that's about 30 seconds behind in the GC, but you have good riders on the flat terrain, you can definitely use those zones to your advantage. I do expect them to be slightly nerfed though, because as I said, their impact is absolutely humongous. Um, I will showcase them. Uh, or I will showcase that later in, uh, in this stage. But um, yeah, I think it's a cool ad. They haven't really marketed that much, if I'm being honest. I haven't seen much of it. Um, but I think that's like probably the best ad they've done in, uh, in Silicon Race. Right, as you can see, I'm not pacing highly. I'm basically 65, but you can see the peloton being stretched massively. Um, and we do have 52 of wind uh, coming sideways, I believe. So if I had like a strong team, I would probably increase the rhythm. And you would see cracks also here. It's pretty much Roglic. Uh, strong start list on this uh, Gonville game race. You got Roglic. 
the first uh, attempt I don't had again Bernal. So yeah, the, the start list on single races are sometimes packed, but sometimes they're not because on the Tour de France, you literally can have no Roglic or Bernal or Pogacar and yeah, it was weird. Now, the one thing I don't like about this new feature, um, I mean, the, the, this stage is like shows it, but not as much as another stage on the Vuelta. It is extremely hard to get water on these stages. It, it is massively hard. It's, it's horrendous. Because your rider will literally go to like a point where he's going to lose all of his energy trying to come back. So, yeah, this is tough. And there's a stage on the Vuelta, which is literally 172 kilometers, and I believe 165 kilometers of literally zone exposed to the wind. So, not ideal. All right, and as you can see, there's only 25 riders left in the first group. I'm expecting A1 to come back. Yeah, A1 did come back. But this just shows how difficult the, um, the echelons are making this race because Grand Vell game isn't necessarily a tough stage, if we're being honest. It's quite rare to have um, a peloton of, like, 40 riders, especially in there was like n no main rhythm. I didn't, I didn't decide to pace. I didn't do anything remotely close that could have like led to, uh, to, to gaps. Also, is that a hand? I'm sorry, what now? Okay, no, I thought his handlebar was on the ground for some reason. Uh, but as I said, right, getting water, Bruno Amirai decided to do so and he's now dropped. Nice one, Bruno. All right, well, um, we'll take a quick look at the sprint. I've heard that like the lead outs are quite difficult on uh, on this year, or at least they do consume a lot of energy from what I heard. I'm not sure because I've literally never done them, um, but we're, we're going to see. We're going to see. Stefan Kung will um, lead out quite soon. I've got Pauli and Neil Zola in my wheel. All right, let's take a look then. I mean, I don't have like, I literally did not lose any red whatsoever. Although Stefan Kung does have like 67 acceleration. Can I win go over game? Yes, I can. So at least the first recording that went wrong wasn't a, I mean, it was an L, but at the end of the day, it is still a dub. We take the win, but we don't give a shit about that. I just wanted to showcase the new Echelons feature. Uh, and we have one more thing to look at in this new game. And the thing we have to look at is time trials, because they have absolutely ruined it. You're ruining it. Because now, I'm going right, to show you two very simple examples. The first, as you can see now, this red bar on your time trial, I'm going to try and be somewhat conservative. That only applies to like the, the time trial below like 10 to, um, to 15k, uh, because above like, I mean, above 20, 25k, the red bar literally serves no purpose. But I have Gidan Van Waller, who's a decent time trialist, right? I have 76. It's not bad compared to Benjamin Thomas. Benjamin, sorry, Benjamin Thomas also has 76. You can see I'm eight seconds behind him within five kilometers, all right? Now, this is 86 thing. I don't, we have like an hour rate of 181, which is not too bad. I'm going to increase it and I want to finish the red bar as soon as I cross the line, all right? This sounds like the logical answer to, to how you're meant to, to play, right? I mean, you don't want to like, Kill yourself because time trial is an exercise of, I mean, stamina, right? I finished 25 seconds behind Benjamin Thomas. I'll take you through what I'll do with, um, with Filippo Ghana. You'll see it's quite different. You know what? I'm even going to go for a second comparison. We're going to add Rundin X in the mix and have the exact same tactic as I did with Van Baller, all right? Currently, I'm leading with Kurt Koski. I did not even manage him. That was the AI. Um, but I'm just going to do the exact same tactic with Dennis as I did with Van Baller, to have a very decent comparison with Ghana. A cross line for Ryan Dennis, and it is seven seconds behind Kutkowski. We are talking about Rohan Dennis, yeah? Rohan Dennis. All right, Ghana's about to start. Let me show you the new meta. You have to 99 it. Or well, at least, not 99 it, but you want to like not necessarily keep your red energy, because that doesn't really mean anything. So, yeah, this is how you're meant to play now. Stefan Kung is leaning in Sainte-Marie-de-la-Mer. Uh, I'm going to go 99. And technically, I should be able to be first. At least, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm not. Right, the reason for that is that, you see, I've lost my red energy going 99, yeah? The AI doesn't. The AI does not lose its energy. So they can literally be consistent throughout the entire race 
and you're sat there like an absolute moron just taking an L because there's nothing else you can do. Now, I believe there's also been some changes to the team time travel aspect. However, I don't think I've got the time to show it. Um, and also, it's, it's, it's a small um, part of the, of the game because there's only like a selected amount. Uh, but hopefully, it will be fixed. Uh, from what I heard, um, it's probably the worst thing they've ever done um, because the team time travel that your train just breaks for no reason. As soon as someone like, drops red bar, he drops everyone behind. Um, so, yeah, that's, a, that's quite bad. That is quite bad. He doesn't go to the side to avoid dropping. No, no, he just blocks everyone and brings everyone um, towards him. So, not gonna lie, not the best of ads. Um, but this is where the, um, the first impression videos goes. I don't know what to make of the game. Um, I'm going to allow myself to uh, a metaphor, yeah, or a comparison. I'm currently wearing a Lyon jersey. That's the team I support, that's the team I love. We have potential, however, we managed to make stinkers out of what we have. And I believe that the version we currently are playing of PCM 2021 is the PCM version of Lyon, because there is potential. There's some new features they've tried to add, they've tried to like make the game better. And I believe that some of the people that work on this game genuinely care about how the people react. They've actually listened to the community for the first time this year, or for the first time, but they've actually listened to the community this year, which hadn't been that much of a thing in the previous um, iterations of the game. And some of the devs are very, like, are fans of cycling. And it shows because some of the improvements are actually smart. However, I believe that this game has been rushed. Um, I, I've never worked in the gaming industry. I do believe that the version we got, so we got the, um, the, uh, this version on the 28th of June. I'm not sure I can say that, but I got it on the 28th of June. The version we had was unbearably glitchy. For three days, the pro cyclists weren't able to launch. We had no bikes, no helmets. There was chaos everywhere. The races would crash instantly. It was just tragic. And the game has improved since that day. I I'm going to be very honest with you. However, I do not believe that the quality of the beta we currently have is the state of a game that is literally out in three days. And I won't make any solid content on this game until I know that the game is stable enough for me to run something. That is the sole issue of it. Um, so yeah, I do once again thank you for allowing me to uh, just be there and talk to you about Pro Cycle Manager 2021. The game is out on the 3rd of June. If you want to buy it, as I said, wait until the full game comes out and you've got like the day one patch. I believe that if the if I, I genuinely do believe that if the fixes are good enough and if we've got very little to no bugs, this can be the best PCM we're gonna have for what we currently have. The gameplay is good, the mountain gameplay is quite fun to play, the AI is actually not too bad. Um and yeah, overall. Out of the current build, I can't give it more than a 5 out of 10. If it's fixed, I'll go for a solid 8. I think that's what I'll say. Following today, we're going to have the first impressions of TDF, which will be out in about 2 hours on the channel. You'll also have a mountain gameplay of PCM and a mountain gameplay of TDF coming soon to the channel, probably later this afternoon. If you're new to the channel and want to see more of my content in the upcoming days on PCM 2021 and TDF 2021, then please do hit that subscribe button just down below. If you've liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike and let me know why. I'll answer to everyone in the comments, but I will see you very soon. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the funk, get your funk on, girl, and don't you ever let Pass me the funk. We're getting drunk in here, and what comes next?